A new asteroid with the nickname The Beast will be flying by Earth this weekend, and it's cutting it pretty close. At a range of only a little over 700,000 miles, which is actually pretty close, this asteroid will be whizzing by us on Sunday, June 8th. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. 
for God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Pope Francis preparing to lead an unprecedented midi summit today in St. Peter's Square. He's invited the Israeli and Palestinian presidents to the Vatican where they will pray for peace through a combination of Jewish, Christian and Muslim prayers. Greg Burke joins us by phone. He is the senior advisor for communications at the Vatican. And Greg, I tell you, by all accounts, of course, this is an unusual summit, certainly unprecedented, with, again, Jewish, Christian, and Muslim prayers whispered in the shadows of St. Peter's Basilica. If you could start, if you would, by talking about the significance of this occurrence. Sure, uh, no doubt, no doubt about it. I thought, thanks. You know, it's it's interesting. I read a great a great tweet uh, today. Somebody said, you know, I didn't pay any attention to the news to the news for a week, and all of a sudden you have the Israelis and Palestinians praying together at the Vatican. Whoa! <laughs> so it is uh, certainly unprecedented. It's a, a huge move. This is something that Pope Francis wanted to do on his Holy Land trip. And it was just too difficult in terms of uh, pulling it all together in what was a very short trip. And that, but that was just two weeks ago. He did manage. He he launched the invitation there uh, officially Sunday two weeks ago. And two weeks later, it's happened with a lot of work, uh, certainly on everybody's part. It's very complicated. You know, it's a a what they're talking about bringing people together to pray. There's uh, all sorts of concerns on every side that we can't uh, sort of mix religions, pretend like they're all the same, So, but they are coming together. We'll, there will be three different moments, uh, basically in chronological order. First, a, a, a Jewish prayers, then Christian, uh, and then the Muslim. Now, what's happened right now is, is Shimon Peres has just arrived about five minutes ago, and he has sat down with the Pope in Santa Marta, the Pope's house. Uh, the Mahmoud Abbas will arrive in about 15 minutes. He'll also have a one-on-one -on -one with the Pope, uh, or a, a small greeting with the Pope, and then they will all go together uh, into the Vatican Garden, Gardens where the actual prayer will take place. And if I can jump in there, Greg, because you're talking about Israeli President Shimon Peres and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, both going to be there and uh, just now having each private meetings with the Pope, but as the Pope calls for prayers for peace. Perez and Abbas, I understand they're expected to discuss political developments when they will meet in private after the prayer. So what do you think the two leaders hope to walk away with, Greg? Well, I think uh, they hope to walk away with goodwill. I mean, it's basically, uh, they will have to each speak for themselves, but at, at least from the, the Franciscan priest who organized it for the Pope said, you know, this is a prayer break. This is what we hope is a start uh, for for hope, okay? He said nobody thinks that peace is going to break out because of one day of prayer, but this will get people uh, praying. It will perhaps instill, give some sense of hope. We certainly get uh, that idea from the Pope, you know, that we need uh, we need to do something different from, from just what we've done up till now because it hasn't worked. Yeah, and you can't get to peace in the Middle East without hope to start with, and Hope starts with prayer. So let's hope that when the uh, Jewish and Christian and Muslim prayers are whispered there uh, in the shadows of St. Peter's Basilica, somehow we can get some sort of understanding and start to get to some peace there in the Middle East. There's just my hope there. אדוני אדוננו, מה אדיר שמך בכל הארץ, אשר תנא הודך על השמיים. מפי עוללים ויונקים יסדת עוז, למען צורריך. לדוד, אליך אדוני נפשי אשא. אלוהי, בך בטחתי אל אבושה, אל יאלצו אויבי לי. גם כל קובעך לא יבושו, יבושו הבוגדים. A reading from the book 
of Isaiah. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. Alhamdulillah, الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور وأبدع كل شيء من العدم فقدره تقديرا اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام فحينا بالسلام فجنب البلاد والعباد ويلات الحرب والدمار انتصر للمستضعف Let's go towards peace dialogue at all costs. Patience is necessary to move forward day after day and get stronger and live together in peace, in tolerance, for the glory of God and for the good of everybody. To have peace, one needs courage, far more than what you need for a war. Courage to say yes for a meeting and uh, to say no against conflict, against fl uh, violence. We have yet to achieve this mission of humanity. Even when peace seems distant, we must pursue it to bring it closer. And if we pursue peace with determination, with faith, we will reach it, and it will end you through all of us, as it is written in Isaiah. They will beat their swords and into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up swords against nations, nor will they train for war anymore. We ask you, O oh Lord, for peace in the Holy Land, Palestine and Jerusalem, together with its people. We call on you to make Palestine and Jerusalem in particular a secure land for all believers, a place of prayer and worship for the followers of the three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity and Islam, and for all those who wish to visit it, as is stated in this Holy Quran. Lord, you are the peace peace emanates from you. O God of glory and majesty, grant us security and safety and alleviate the suffering of my people at home and in the diaspora. This was a highly unusual day at the Vatican where Pope Francis prayed for peace with none other than the Israeli and Palestinian presidents. NBC's Ann Thompson is in Rome tonight with that story for us. Ann? Lester, this prayer service was rich in symbolism that Pope Francis hopes will reignite the peace process. It began with a warm embrace between Israeli President Shimon Peres and Mahmoud Abbas, the president of the Palestinian Authority. Then with the Pope and the leader of the Orthodox Christian Church, Bartholomew, they went to a carefully choreographed service in the garden where they heard prayers from the Jewish, Muslim and Christians' faiths. Each leader spoke, the Pope saying peace calls for more courage than war. Perez told the group even when peace seems distant, we must choose to bring it closer. And Abbas prayed for security, safety and stability in the region. Then they all exchanged a sign of peace. This was broadcast live around the world because the Pope hopes that it is these pictures that will push the people of the Holy Land to ask their leaders to end this conflict. Lester? And Thompson in Rome for us tonight. Thank you. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. 